One thing that I love about build crafting in Vir Rising is that uh, it feels different to play. Each school of magic, it has quite a lot of spells that time. In this case, we're building it for a mage, for a sorcerer. And it actually changes your playstyle and it feels different. At least that's that has been my experience from the pe previous ones that I have attempted to do. Now, let's talk about illusion magic and what is it that we're going to be able to do on the skill rotations and the skills that we're going to have a little while. We're going to discuss what is it that this guy is going to do. So, we have two actual two mechanics for the illusion magic, which is weaken and phantasm. Weaken your enemy to reduce their damage output by 15% for 5 seconds. It has a 33% chance to gain a phantasm whenever a weakened target perishes. Every time that you kill an enemy that is weakened, you have a 33% chance of getting a phantasm. Now, a phantasm increases your spell cooldowns by 1% and grants you 2% chance to reset the cooldowns on cast. The effect stacks up to 10 times and it's removed once you successfully reset cooldown on cast. Uh, why do I love this so much? Because in reality, this build is for someone that wishes, that wants to make a range mage and for you to be able to spam spells. That's the gist of everything. Everything that we're going to build in this character is going to be dependent on reducing the cooldown as much as possible and being able to be on the distance as much as possible. We're also going to be lacking a little bit on AoE, but we'll take care of that on one of the spells that we're going to be using, which is this one right here, the Spectral Wolf. Spectral Wolf bounces to a near nearby enemy after each hit to up to two additional hits. A little side note, once you add a jewel here, you can increase that to three, uh, so that you can bounce three times and get uh, get get like the AoE kind of damage uh, with this right here. It deals 125% magic damage in the first hit. Subsequent hits deal 85% magic of the previous hit. Each hit inflicts weaken and grants a stack of phantasm. So, very interesting here is that you don't have to kill things for you to get a phantasm because you are going to be able to get just one free phantasm thanks to your spectral wolf. And remember that the phantasm reduces the spell cooldown by a certain type of percentage. It also has a certain percentage chance of being able to reduce the cooldown on itself just immediately. And then we have the, the Wraith Spear. These two spells, I decided to use this one uh, in particular because they allow you to be far away from the enemy. This one is going to deal 160% magic damage and it's also going to inflict weaken on the enemy. Now, each subsequent heal, uh, uh, hit that you deal on, on, on enemies, it has 75% damage of the previous hit and grants Phantasm as well. So each time it pierces through something, it's also going to give you Phantasm. These two guys right here are going to be contributing to you being able to spam as many spells as possible. So the gist of everything is that with this build, you are going to be spamming spells as much as you can possibly do. Without the necessity of using weapon skills, yes, you have your weapon skills at hand, but more often than not, they are going to be a side something, and what you're really going to be spamming as much as possible, it's going to be your spells. As for the ultimate, I like to use Wisp Dance, but only because this has a little bit of uh, sustainability. We don't have that much sustainability, that is, unless you reach the higher level of jewel tiers that I do have right here. For example, on this, I think that you have to be like tier level 2 or 3, which you get on the third act of the game. It is still mid-game, but uh, for you to get like those shields or those bouncing wisps that sometimes heal you, they come from jewels. Uh, so there is not that much sustainability. The, re the real sustainability that this build is going to have is that the enemy is never going to be in front of you because you're always going to be spamming and spamming and spamming and spamming spells from a distance. So you do want to have an ultimate that is going to heal you. Uh, this one gives you shield as well. And to some extent, it's going to focus a little bit more DPS. But this one right here, it doesn't deal as much damage, but it has a little bit more sustainability. So, yeah, there is that indeed. Our weapon of choice could be 
anything really. It could really be anything that allows us to attack from a distance. So pistols, crossbows, bows, or whips. That's uh, something that you can that you can use. On this specific case scenario, I'm deciding to use this whip that I have right here because it has uh, illusion infused. So the attacks that I deal with this thing, it inflicts weaken. Uh, but uh, if I had something else, like for example, uh, this pistol that I have right here, the explosive markers, they are also illusion infused. Just have in mind that you are a ranged character and you're not going to have that much sustainability when it comes to melee. You do not want to be dealing melee damage. Also, have in mind that uh, the, well, these are of course ancient weapons. So the pistols have uh, max health and physical critical strike power. I don't really focus myself that much on the spells, so I very much like to use a little bit more of the spell critical strike chance that we have on the whip that we have right there. So that's one thing to consider. Just have something that allows you to attack him from a distance, and it doesn't necessarily have to be like an ancient weapon, it could just very well be a regular weapon. Well, it is going to be a major thing, and this is a quintessential part of the build. Uh, you're going to get this armor set in the second act of the game, which is the Dark Magus Chest God, or the Dark Magus uh, overall the entirety of the armor set, because this is going to increase the spell critical strike chance by 10%, it's also going to increase your spell power, you want to have as much spell power as possible. So I can't stress enough how important it is for you to increase, remember, this build is based on being able to spam over and over and over and over and over again your spells. The spells are going to deal quite a lot of damage if you add them a little bit of spell power in there and they're also going to have like the critical strike chance like, to some extent and they're also going to have a uh, leech which is actually one of the ways that you're going to be healing yourself as well. Now finally we are going to have the pendant of the spell weaver. Uh, this is also very much important to have this is going to be one of the most important and again quintessential parts of everything. It is very important for you to get this dependent of the spell weaver as much uh, as soon as possible. Not only because it's going to have a set percentage uh, of chance of being able to inflict weaken on the enemies, but because it also gives you 8% spell down recovery rate. So this is going to be stacking with your already phantasms. So this is going to allow you to be able to spam a little bit faster. That is going to be paired up as well with our blood pool that we have right here. For the blood pool, blood pool we're going to be using Scholar. The Scholar, uh, the first tier, it's going to give you 10 to 20% increased spell power, and the second tier, as much as you can get this uh, right here, uh, is going to give you. Uh, increased spell cooldown recovery rates and also the fourth tier if you're able to get a hundred percent right in here you're going to have a 15 percent chance to reset the spell cooldown on cast which then again all of this is going to be stacking with the overall phantasms that you are going to have meaning that you are just stacking and stacking and stacking spell cooldown recovery and instant spell cooldown recovery so that you can be spamming and spamming spells as much as humanly possible and when it comes to the gameplay loop in reality it it's really not that difficult. You're always going to be using your spells to attack from a distance. You should never be on melee range unless that is uh, for you to dodge attacks or area of effect attacks. But that is going to be your, your best defense. That you're going to deal a tremendous amount of damage with your spear and with your walls. And both of them have some kind of AoE. If you aim properly the spear, it's going to pierce through enemies and the wolves are going to bounce. If you add jewels to the, ba uh, to the wolves, they are going to bounce uh, up to three times as well. And whenever your spells are on cooldown recovery, you can by all means use the weapon skills of your weapon, but those should be like a backup thing. As much as you can be spamming spells, that is going to be your main source of damage. Anyways, if you like the content, so like and the very super appreciate it. Most of you today, you're a gorgeous, beautiful person. You're in the day, gorgeous, and beautiful, beautiful person. Have a lovely, lovely day. And goodbye, subscribe to the channel, like the video. Have a nice day, goodbye.